Hello everyone. Today's video, we are going to be talking about DC imperfections, the component in which makes op amps non-ideal. So these, essentially in the beginning, we used to have these uh, AC input sources connected to this amp, to this op amp, and that would produce what our ideal output is going to be, but in nature and in the physical world there's always going to be some kind of discrepancy and that discrepancy would be some uh, DC value of some sort that is very very minimal but has to be considered if we take into account of uh, in the real world so we have the non-ideal op amp and there's essentially there's a lot of characteristics and I'm gonna highlight five main ones. So one characteristic that would contribute to DC imperfection is for one, finite gain. Number two, non-zero output impedance. Number three, finite input impedance number four offset voltage and number five biased current and in this video and in my next video where I'm gonna do a practical example of DC imperfections we are going to focus on the emphasis of these last two characteristics offset voltage and biased current so let's look at offset voltage shall we so if you can't take a look it may be a little bit too small I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you guys to take a closer look but this is the offset voltage located inside the op amp and this offset voltage is simply going to cause a discrepancy. So in this case, when we have this, we are going to generate a uh, DC output that we don't want in the physical world, but has to take into account. And then we're going to draw a ground here. So what we do to determine what the offset volt to, to determine the DC offset voltage we take the voltage VIOS and uh, VIOS is uh, the, the value is also the same as here because um, this is the negative input terminal and this is the positive input terminal and they're similar to one another so we have VIOS here and then there's going to be a current that's going to travel from VODC to VIOS and then there's going to be another current traveling to the ground like this. And that is how we are going to solve VODC. And I just want to clarify that there's no current flowing around here. So zero current. And once we uh, get our equation, then we can find what VODC is for our offset voltage. So we'll label this as the offset voltage And we also have to label this uh, by the polarities. The next thing would be our biased current. And we have to take into account that there's going to be two biased currents, one from the negative input terminal and one from the positive input terminal. Uh, we are going to start with the negative input terminal, but I put the current source outside of the op amp, but it should be inside the op amp. And I couldn't do it because I ran out of space to draw it, so uh, that's just a little indication. So if we have a current source like this, and we can label this as IB1, so this basically indicates there's a biased current, and also there's going to be no current flowing here. 
and there's going to be a current flowing from uh, the output voltage again of the DC very much like this so the whole current flows through this feedback resistor and then it goes through IB1 through the current source and none of the current travels anywhere between this branch and we can na name this the biased current in the negative input terminal so now we are moving on to our second biased current this time it's located in uh, connected with the positive input terminal and as you can see this is the current IB2 and essentially there's going to be current coming f out from the ground to these two grounds and then entering like this and basically there's no current going into uh, the op amp either for the negative input terminal as well but there is current flowing this time from the ground through the feedback resistor and then to the output right here so there's another thing I want to clarify so I've this is the biased current in the positive terminal and if we take into consideration all of the DC output voltages so we're going back to the offset voltage and we can label the DC output voltage here as uh, 1 our second part as 2 and our sec third part is 3 if we combine all of them up that would basically be what our entire DC imperfection is going to be now another th another thing I want to clarify is the AC source so when we take into consideration of the DC imperfections we actually short out the uh, AC uh, source because um, all these uh, characteristics are operating in DC mode so uh, if you guys didn't catch it carefully we have the AC source right here and then it's shorted for all of our uh, examples so that is it for our theoretical groundwork on how DC imperfections work I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from this and let's move on to our practical example now click on the example box